Good morning to everyone attending today's webinar, Real-Time Project Collaboration with Bluebeam Studio, presented by Microsoft Resources. Um, we know that there's a couple more people who are likely going to be jumping on the line. We're expecting a large crowd today, um, but if you want to just hang tight for a moment, we will be started in just a moment. Okay, looks like we've had a bunch more people hop on the line and we've got a pretty good crowd. We've got a lot to cover in the next hour, so I do want to get started pretty quickly so that we can uh, go ahead and get you through how you can increase your real-time project collaboration with Bluebeam Studio. Before we get started with this AIA continuing education uh, course, a quick word about our uh, presenter uh, or about our um, presenting company today. You found this through Microsoft Resources and Microsoft Resources is a Bluebeam Gold partner who provides training and services on Bluebeam's products. They've been around for over 25 years servicing the AEC industry and really helping customers with a variety of different solutions uh, within the CAD and BIM realm. So they are more than happy to help you out with any questions that come up after today's webinar. My name is Meredith Jung. I'm the technical manager here at Bluebeam, and I am so happy to be with you to show you how you can increase your project collaboration with Bluebeam Studio. A little background on me, I actually come out of the audiovisual industry. Um, I did uh, subcontracting work, installing speakers and screens, and I'm pretty certain that by the time we ended up on site reviewing a design, putting in the speakers uh, almost every time. The drywall was already up, so my apologies if I give a hard time to both general contractors and architects. But one of the things that uh, really drew me to Bluebeam was this idea of being able to digitize our drawings and more easily communicate and collaborate and provide information between each other. And today I want to show you how that project collaboration can help you avoid situations where, for example, your audiovisual contractor comes in after the drywall goes up, runs the wires on the outside and makes the owner angry. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started today with our presentation. Now, this is an AIA continuing education course. And as a course, you will receive credits for completing this. To receive those credits, you do need to be watching live. So those of you watching the recording, my apologies, you won't be getting credits for this. Um, you do also need to be logged in individually to go to webinar because that is how we track that you have attended this course for the required amount of time. If you're not logged in separately to go to webinar, maybe you're all sitting around a single screen, please go ahead, register, log in on separate screens just to make sure that we count your credit for this. Uh, another blurb, and you can read this on this slide, um, but while this is a continuing education course from the AIA, um, it's just registered with them, it has not uh, been approved or endorsed by the AIA. And then questions um, related to specific materials, methods, and services will be addressed at the conclusion of this presentation. Please type them into the question window and we'll go ahead and do a live Q&A at the end. So today you are learning about doing project collaboration in real time. So we're going to look at Bluebeam Review and the Cloud Solutions Studio within it and how Bluebeam Studio can be used throughout a variety of different workflows across the project lifecycle to really uh, increase the work that you do um, and uh, enhance your communication with your project partners. Now how we're going to do that is we're going to look at four different learning objectives. The first is implementing digital workflows that span the project lifecycle. We'll look at ways to take care of a variety of them. We'll look at creating optimized PDFs that seamlessly transition from the office to the field. We'll look at how we redline 2D and 3D PDFs with a variety of different tools that replicate pen and paper, and then how we can customize them to increase our collaboration and save those custom annotations to increase our collaboration. And then finally, <clears throat> we'll look at how we use Bluebeam Studio both to store 
all of the folders that we need for our project for free in the cloud and to review documents together anytime in real time uh, or on our own time. So we'll look at all of that together today. Let's get out of PowerPoint and let's get into Bluebeam review. And actually, before I do that, let's talk PDF creation. Now, with um, the Bluebeam suite of products, there are plugins for creating PDFs. And there are a couple things to keep in mind, regardless of what you're going to use to create PDFs in terms of best practices. The first for any PDF creation tool is to be able to easily, um, just with a single click, create your PDFs. It makes sure that everybody, in fact, is creating those PDFs, simplifies the process for them. The other is to make sure that everything in those PDFs is, or in those documents is being transferred to the PDF. PDF is an ISO standard file format, which means that there are a lot of programs out there that can create PDFs um, and that can view PDFs, but there's not many that really transfer all of the information during PDF creation. Now, for uh, a product like Word, you want to make sure your hyperlinks, file properties, and bookmarks are all going to transfer over. There are also plugins uh, within the Bluebeam suite for, um, for AutoCAD and Revit and Navisworks. And those will all include additional things. So, for example, on the AutoCAD side, making sure that those SHX fonts get transferred over a searchable text. Or on the uh, Revit side, um, making sure that all of the hyperlinks can transfer over from Revit, making sure that all of the different views are also coming over uh, properly into the PDF. Those are all things that can be transferred with a good plugin. The final thing is to be able to batch convert. So uh, one of the great things about having a plugin that can batch convert is if, for example, you have someone who spent their day just updating spec sections, and they know that they updated 10 spec sections for the day, well, they can go ahead and take all of those specifications with the batch PDF functionality, add those all in, and convert them all to PDF at the end of the day, they run out, they grab a cup of coffee, or maybe they're just finishing packing up their desk and their stuff as they're getting ready to go home. The PDFs are created and they're ready to go out the door. Okay, and this works whether it's CAD drawings or uh, models or even here is in these spec sheets with Word. So having tools that allow you to select multiple documents, convert them at once will save your team a lot of time, especially if you're trying to get PDFs out so that you can more easily collaborate on them. Now, coming into the tools that we'll be using for collaboration, here within the software, um, Bluebeam Review, a real quick introduction to how you'll get around. There are menus at the top. Within those menus, you'll notice the command bar changes with different commands. And this layout here with the menu and command bars, along with the layout of these toolbars on the side, is all controlled by this guy called the Profile Manager. Right now, I'm in my Design Review profile. Today, we'll talk primarily about Design Review. We'll look at some punch um, and other field work. But if I wanted a different set of tools, for example, I wanted my construction tools. I could then get my construction tools. You'll notice a side panel popped out when I did that. There's actually three of them one on each side and one on the bottom that you can use. And they have additional functionality in the software that we'll use today. And we'll find all of that here under tab access. Coming back to my construction pro profile though, this is stock standard out of the box, but if I wanted to customize it because there's other tools I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I could do that pretty easily. So I've got all of these different uh, markup editing tools, some text tools, Let's say that what I really needed, though, was the ability to sign documents. I place digital signatures day to day in my role. Turning on the digital signature tools now makes those available for me to add a signature field or sign a document with just a single click from the toolbar. For today, though, I'm going to go back into my design review profile. It's the one that I'll be using as we go through. All of these can be exported, so at any point you can click the profile manager select any of these profiles and just export it out so that everybody else on the team can use the same set of tools. One of the nice things with project collaboration is making sure that everybody's using the same tools. That way you know both how to help other people out if they're having some difficulty 
um, but also you're able to uh, standardize the way that they communicate. The last thing I want to show you before we get into the tools that we'll actually be using for collaboration are the tools that we use just for basic navigation of documents. Here in my file access, I'm going to take a local document. This is on my computer. So these are not up in the cloud yet. A couple of uh, local documents here. You'll notice I've got my specs. And my specs, it's a pretty easy scroll through. I'm just scrolling my scroll wheel on my mouse, just the way you expect a PDF to work. Now think about how a large format document, you know, one of your 2D drawings out of Revit would work if you were trying to scroll up and down through it. Quick guess, that would probably be pretty painful. No worries. If you're used to AutoCAD or Revit, you're used to the navigation here in review. All you have to do is use your scroll wheel to zoom in and just click to pan around. It's as easy as that. You can zoom back out, zoom back in somewhere else. It'll always zoom in wherever your mouse is situated. So that makes it very easy for you to get in and out of the document. Now that we know how we're going to get around these documents, let's go ahead and get started with some of the tools that we're going to use within collaboration. I'm going to close our spec section. Not going to use that right now, but what I will be using is a variety of markup tools. Everything that you would be doing with a pen and paper, you can replicate right here within review. And when you are looking at collaboration solutions, you do want to make sure you're replicating all of the work that your teams are doing most regularly, whether they're commenting on a design review, whether they're trying to track issues out in the field, or they're trying to you know, formalize a punch list and go through and mark down what it is that the contractor messed up, or really the subcontractor, it would be my fault, uh, messed up on when we went and did the installation work. So whether that's adding text notes, that could be text box, call outs, pretty standard ones, um, flags. My favorite here is the typewriter because all I have to do is just start typing. There's pen tools, pens and highlighters. The highlighters are smart. When there's text, they highlight the text and I'm a little trigger happy this morning out here in California, it's a little early. Uh, they can also do some free form writing in addition to highlighting some basic text. There are line tools, so anything that you might want to uh, shape out with a line, you can, including putting arcs onto a page. You can take care of a variety of different shapes. Everyone knows and loves our friendly neighborhood cloud. And you can even drop images onto the scene. So let's say, for example, that there's a crack over in the wall over here. Well, let's actually find that image right there. So here, Within my uh, images, would help if I was in the right folder. Try this again. Within my images, I've got an issue with the wall here. Let's put down this issue. So there's the image. We could use, again, those line tools, put an arrow to which wall that is. And then even better than all of that, once we put in the image and the wall where it is, we can then use my personal favorite tool, which is this Cloud Plus. It takes the cloud, adds a call out right to it, and we can say, cracked wall, please fix. Okay, makes it really easy to get everything going. And we can even edit this around so that it's really easy to read. We're not overlapping any lines. Now, all of the markups that you see here in the software, all of this can be edited and uh, really changed up to better communicate who it is who's making that communication on the page. Do you remember back to the days of paper? I sure do. Um, I, back in the days of paper, what we did was we took our red pens, we all marked up in the red pens, and then the intern copied it all over in their handwriting, and no one could tell whose comment was whose, right? like the eternal struggle of every review meeting I sat through. Well, here we go. Let's actually make this unique so that it looks like it's my comment. We'll say this cracked wall that's been found is from me as the general contractor. So I'm going to change the subject here. I'm going to say this is the general contractor's comment. They're going through, they find the issue on site. They want it fixed before we get into punch. We're going to change the appearance of this. Now, we got lots of colors. I'm going to go with green today. Take something a little different. I almost always pick blue. You can probably guess why. But 
get that a nice green fill opacity. I'm going to change the color again of that lead, and I'm going to change the color of our text so that all of it falls into that nice shade of green. So now I've got a comment. It's for the general contractor. It's a cracked wall. Please fix. But what you're going to notice is if I pick that cloud plus again, I'm just going to pick it this time out of my toolbar. I could also use the keyboard shortcut of K to access it. And I wanted to place a new one here. Change detail number. Right? Whatever that is, that's still in the default colors, right? It's still in this red and white. But I really want to be using the settings that are here, not these default settings here for the Cloud Plus. I could right click here and I could change my defaults, but I'm working on several projects and each project has me working in a different color coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the tool chest and the tool chest allows you to take all of your customized markups. It saves them in the recent tools, every markup you've used, and then allows you to save it to uh, either uh, one of your own tool sets like my tools or a custom tool set like one of these architect, contractor, and engineer tool sets so that you can then access it again and place a new comment. So here we go. Change door swing. Right? Maybe it should swing in instead of out. Easy fix. It's all been documented here. And what you'll notice, just to show this off again, if I open back up those preferences, I'm just going to slide over so you can see those both over here. Open up those preferences or properties over here again, and what you'll see, I still have general contractor. All those colors are the same. It's really just that I now can place a new comment with those exact same settings. Now, if, for example, I run into cracked walls on a regular basis, I could double click on this and I could get an exact copy of it. This is great if you've got symbols you've put together um, or text that you use on a regular basis. So um, I know uh, some people like to have set text for how they work with different issues that come around. They could easily make that text something that they always use again and again exactly as it is, they could save it with the custom text each time into those tool sets. Or, of course, you can double click it back and once again place a new markup, same properties. So you've got lots of options there for how you want to work with this. Now, all of the tools and the tool sets um, can be exported and shared with other people on the team. In this particular profile, I have three tool sets that are built in, so architect, contractor, and engineer. I could add a new one, which is, I'm just going to add general contractor. Click OK here. Save it to the default folder. Let's drop that in. That's our general contractor one. And then I can click the little blue gear wheel give it a quick save and then export it and send it off to everybody else on the team. You'll be able to see how this could be useful as we look in Studio because we can actually upload these uh, into Studio and allow people to actually uh, access them from Studio. They double click and they've got all the, same, all the right tools for their discipline um, or for the project that they're working on. And you can create as many of these as you like. You're not stuck to just one a uh, tool set and as many tool sets as you like. Now we have comments on the page. We've customized comments, we've saved them. That recent tools will clear out when this closes. The last thing that we need for collaboration is we need a record of what's going on here. We need to be able to do more with this information. Okay, because ultimately what ends up happening with our reviews, right, whether we're doing a constructability review or a design review, uh, QAQC, wherever we're at in the process, is that we've got to be able to get this assigned to someone to fix, right? So, for example, if there's a cracked wall and we need to get the subcontractor out there to fix the cracked wall, then we need to be able to get them the information that's on this page, ideally in the format of a task list. Down here at the bottom of the software is a feature called the markups list. And the markups list 
includes a running record of every markup that's in place, who placed it, the date and time that they placed it at, any comments, and any statuses. So for example, for our correct wall, the status of this could be that um, the issue is accepted and then the issue has been completed. And you'll notice the status is stack. They track the date and the timestamp. Now there's a variety of built-in columns we can be using here. There's measurement tools within review. So if we were taking measurements, we could turn on any variety of measurement tools here. We can look at, for example, um, layers, if we wanted to use layers to separate our different markups. Heck, um, we can also turn things off. So for example, if I don't need to see the color of all these markups, I just turn those off. Maybe I want to check mark those so I can quickly check through when everything's been completed. And once they're done, just check those off. Now this is what's built into the software, but let's say that we do want something custom because again, we're trying to create this task list for all of these reviews. Well, here in Manage Columns and Custom Columns, we can now quickly add a task list. So uh, this could be text. We could add some choices, be able to pick from the different subcontractors. Maybe it's a formula. Again, if you're working with measurements, you've got that option. But coming back to text, I'm just gonna make a responsibility column. And here we go. Coming back down, let's actually also, while we're at it, filter this out so that we can just see the general contractor's comments. And now I can assign this to, let's say that um, my colleague Alice is taking care of cracked walls, or our subcontractor Alice. Oh, this is the door swing. The door swing is John's responsibility. And we can go through, assign all those responsibilities, and then sort by those responsibilities there. Now, the last thing, of course, about all of this before we get this task list out is that ultimately this task list is not being created typically just off of one person's comments. Remember, we were talking about the intern who copied over all of our handwritten comments by pen over onto the piece of paper. We can do the same thing here. Everybody has this PDF. I'm just going to go back through and import comments from the architect and the engineer as they went along this walk take out the contractor's comments, those are mine, and throw the architect and engineer's comments on. What you're going to notice, I'm going to zoom out to full page, and what you'll notice now is that we've got a bunch of new comments here on the page. Looks like this is actually from a constructability review or a design review here, label the ice maker, label the lockers, cart charging station, right? Everybody's comments on the same document. We're going to talk in a second about how we add all these comments together in real time, but in case you've got someone who doesn't want to do the real time thing, they prefer doing things the old school way, they can mark up the PDF, and that doesn't matter what PDF program they mark it up in, they can use any PDF program to mark it up, and you can take all of their markups and consolidate them onto a single document. It makes it easy uh, for you to consolidate everyone's comments. The last thing that I do want to show, I'm going to come turn our filter back on. Here's our filter here. Let's say that we're just creating the task list um, for everything that was mentioned by the general contractor here. We can summarize everything that's down in this markup list. So this information is not tied to the PDF. It can be sent other places, whether that's uh, with CSV or XML into Excel whether it's to paper, we've all seen that subcontractor who never wants to get away from paper, or if it's a, a summary um, with just media that's uh, attached in terms of photos and things like that. But I'm gonna take a PDF summary right now, append it to the current PDF, it's going to create hyperlinks, makes it easy for everyone to see what's going on. This is gonna be our task list. Click OK. It's going to take just the filtered markups. It's going to organize it based on our sort, and we sort it by responsibility. So you'll see the ones without a responsibility, the ones that are John's, the ones that are Alice's. If Alice had a question about where that cracked wall was that she was supposed to be taking care of, she could go ahead and click on the thumbnail there and jump right into the PDF to see where it is. And you'll notice here, as I open our thumbnails tab, Here's that task list, right? Here's 
the PDF. So very easy to get around and get this information out. All of the features that I've shown you so far, except for creating custom columns, will work throughout Studio. And I'll tell you in Studio sessions about custom columns and when you need to create them. But these are all going to be the base tools upon which we start our collaboration work, because we're going to use all of these tools to enhance our collaboration. So let's jump into Studio now. Now, Studio is docked at the top 24-7, so I just click the little blue button there, and I'm into Studio. If you're not logged in, you'll actually just see this little button up here. You'll click it, and it, it'll give you the option to create a login or sign in. And once you're signed in, you'll have access to Studio Sessions and Studio Projects. Studio Sessions is real-time document-based collaboration so that you and all of your project collaborators working on the same PDF at the same time. Everybody comments at the same time um, or, again, on their own time. And we'll talk about how that works as we get into Studio Sessions. Studio Projects is unlimited storage on the cloud. It's a light document management system. It allows you to store all of your project files and set permissions on a folder basis. Let's start in Projects because I, um, I, I think Projects is a great place to start. It's the place where I typically store all of my files when I work on a project. And I've seen a lot of other people who do that too when they're using Projects and Sessions. So Projects allows you to upload any folder and within those folders, it's any type of file. So for example, here in the field report, I've got some image files down under RFIs. We've got an Excel along with an RFI template form. The sheets, all of our sheets today are PDFs, but if you wanted to be storing your Revit project up here, it's unlimited storage on the cloud available to you. Within Studio Projects, there are a variety of settings that are available as the administrator to be able to control access to this information. The first is user access. We can restrict users by email address and then add them here. So if I wanted to add my colleagues and give them access, I would click the green button there. I prefer not having them in this project. It's just me. Um, so it makes it easier for me to control the data, but I can invite people there or I can unrestrict users and give anyone with our uh, Studio Link access to this. There's also permissions. So I can turn someone else into an administrator by allowing full control for them. I can do all of my permissions by uh, everyone as a whole, or I can actually set them for individual users or groups. And you'll notice in my folder permissions, my folder permissions for everything in the project is read-write. So everybody who comes into this project automatically has read and write capabilities for all of these folders but my engineering team has read-only capabilities, except for the specification. So the engineering team has the ability to read, write, and delete from the specification folder, but everything else has to go through me for approval. So there's a lot of different ways to play with um, the user uh, settings here, whether that's folder permissions, regular permissions, and who you give access to, to really protect your information that's on the cloud. Now, any document that's in a studio project can be worked on by checking it out and opening it in its source program. So, for example, with specifications, if I wanted to work on this Word spec, I could check it out, double click, and it'll actually open in Microsoft Word. It's the same if you've got a Revit file going or another document that's stored up here. Okay. Maybe this should actually be cold framed metal framing. I don't know why you would do that, but cold framed instead of cold formed. I can make that change here, save the document, and now I can come back in and check it in. Change to cold framed. Let everybody know what I changed on it. And now that updated Word document is here within this project. Anyone else who opens it, even if it's in read only, I'm just double clicking to make it read only. You'll notice there's that cold frame, there's that change I made. Now, when it comes to PDFs, those PDFs are all going to open in review. And you can use these little green buttons on the side to actually sync them locally so that if you lose internet connection wherever you're at, maybe you're doing a punch walk out on site and that punch walk happens to be somewhere where you're not going to have internet connection, 
You can sync those files down while you're on an internet connection. Okay. Once you've synced them down, you're just going to right click them all, check them out. So those are the three files you're working on today. And then once they're checked out, you can lose your internet connection and just open them up and start working on them because they're synced locally. So it makes it very easy. At any point here, I can add a quick little markup. So this is our first floor reference plan. Maybe the women's restroom doesn't quite look large enough. There's not enough stalls to accommodate all the women who will be going through this airport. Make the women's restroom larger. I mean, if this were a punch walk, you wouldn't be saying that. You'd be saying something like, you know, a uh, problem with the sink, please fix, right? But if you did that, you could check it back in. And you can, again, multi-select. We can check them all in at once. I had a comment about a uh, women's restroom. Check those all in. And now that that's all back on the server, you'll notice I have this open. It's locked. So I've got a read-only copy of it. Someone else could check it out and update it. And we could easily come through and look at the revision history for this document at any time. I can go through and take this document and I can, for example, um, restore a previous version, or I can open that just to see what it looked like in that previous revision. So in its previous revision, it was nice and clean. If I wanted to restore it, I could, or I could just see what that file history was. So lots of control over our documents here. Now, as I mentioned, we can do this all offline, but where things get really cool is if we start to collaborate together in real time. So this is, I guess, um, this is one-on-one, -on -one, right? We check it out, we check it back in, and then everybody sees our updates. But let's say that we want everybody to see our updates simultaneously. I'm gonna take these two documents, the first floor plan south and first floor plan north. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to add them to a new studio session. And I'll show you how to start one without uh, having a project, but let's uh, do airport expansion design review. Expansion project design review, we'll do that. Click OK, create a brand new session. It's going to include both of these files. And as it's being created on the cloud, it's going to prompt me to say, who do you want to invite to this session? Who should be coming in? Actually, it doesn't prompt when I do it this way, but I can easily invite them. You'll notice that there's a little teeny tiny envelope there in the corner by the red lock for the attendees. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add our group. So I'm going to add our engineering team and click OK and invite them all to come join. So they are now receiving an invitation from Studio in their email. Once they get that invitation, they're going to click the link on it and join us. While they're getting that invitation and joining us, I'm going to head home to show you how we would start a new session. So if we wanted to start a brand new studio session, all we would click is new session. We don't have to be in a project. So we can just do a review session using the files maybe that we're storing in SharePoint um, or that we've been using locally on our computer. As long as they're PDFs, we can upload them to that session and invite our collaborators to join. I can also come in, I'm going to go into one of my previous sessions. So this is a session that's been open for a couple of weeks now. Actually, it's maybe open for a month at this point. And what you're going to notice with this session is that this session has had multiple attendees in the past. It's still open. We don't have to work in real time. We can be working asynchronously. And what you'll notice here, I've got a variety of different comments tracked here in this record. And we'll look a little more at the record when we do this real time, but I can click any one of these comments and I can see where it is on the page. So move measurement off of room label. Well, that's a good comment to make because you really can't read that room label there with the measurement there. So something we're definitely going to need to fix. At this point, I can come in and use all of the tools that I've been using all day, right? We still have the markups list. Or maybe I just want to do a quick reply, okay? That should probably be something that the architect's team replies to, right? Moving that measurement. Got it. We'll take care of it. Now, again, if we were online at the same time, this would be very quick and easy for us to just fix it up, right? Because we'd be fixing it more or less in real time. But we can still do this asynchronously. We don't have to be online at the same time. My colleague, Kelly, who added this comment, 
Kelly is all the way in Australia. So she's based out of Brisbane and she and I can collaborate on this document because again, we're all you know, uh, working here within studio sessions. Jumping out though, um, I'm going to leave this particular session, go back in to, oops, and I clicked the wrong one again, so let's try this again. Go back into our airport expansion project design review, and what you'll notice now is that I've got a whole host of friends here. Uh, Marissa, Steve, Amy, and Angela are all in this session. Steve said hello to us, so hey Steve. Thanks for joining our review. That record also has a chat capability. So we can be doing a lot of the stuff that we would be doing in terms of our own constructability or design reviews. We're all using different colored comments, so it's very easy to tell whose comments are whose. Some are black and red, some are blue, some are light blue, some are orange. And if I wanted to respond to any of this again, let's say I actually just want to use this and I could be like, maybe I'm just going to write over it. I should use a call out, but I could be like, no, please leave as standard office wall. An immediate response there. And again, if I wanted to know who placed this comment, I can come into the markups list. There's mine. Here's this other one. Amy placed that. Amy now has the answer that she needs to get moving with this project. And Speaking of Amy, if I wanted her to be able to deal with this right away, I could actually alert Amy and say, hey, Amy, I answered that. If Amy had gone offline, she'd get an email response that said, hey, Meredith alerted you to the fact that she took care of answering your question. And that notification would show up here in the notification. Now, my other studio session had a notification available there that I could have worked with. Um, this one does not. But as you can see, we've got a full set of comments going back and forth from different people. Up here, are these bathrooms ADA compliant? Yes, these restrooms are ADA compliant. We are good to go. Fantastic. All right, everyone's placing their comments together. I'm just gonna leave this big so that you can watch the colors pop up in real time as we talk through some of the other functionality here for us in Studio Sessions, right? Okay. So one of them is the alert, is the notifications. So you'll notice down here, Steve Jones alerted me to a Cloud Plus. You'll notice in my notifications, here's that alert. I showed you how I alerted Amy. Here's my alert from Steve. Steve says this is the CEO's office. We need to add a private bathroom. Good to know, we're going to get onto that. We need to fix that. So I can respond to him right here. The other thing that you'll notice as we're going around here is that you've got this pending section, okay? And pending is for markups that are placed while offline. So let's say I looked at the notification, saw that that was going, but for some reason, the internet went out. Why would the internet go out? No idea, but I've seen crazier things happen in my life. So internet goes out as I wanna go respond to Steve. For the heads up, I'll get the team on it. Notice that now in the pending, we have this comment here. And any comments that I place, while well, they'll show up with the date and time here on the page of 8.39 a.m., you'll notice that they are all still pending and upload to the server. So let's go in notifications. Or sorry, let's go not to notifications, let's stay on pending. Let's connect ourselves back online. And what you'll notice now is that that pending activity has disappeared. But here in the record, we now show that particular comment. The record has tracked everything that we've done. It tracks it at the time that it posts to the cloud. So luckily I came back online at 839. And it all posts to the crowd at 839. Whoops. Looks like someone, someone's uh, mute or uh, someone put us on hold on someone that's uh, affecting our audio. Hold on a second there. Let's see if we can fix this. Oh, there we go. 
Perfect. So glad we got rid of the whole music. Sorry about that, guys, but glad that it's uh, all working here. Okay. So coming back into studio sessions here, um, we've got this all fixed up over here. We're placing our comments. Everything's been tracked when people came, when people left all the comments they made when files were added. So we've got a lot of information here. We have all the information in our markups list. But again, this is a different set of information. This is like those meeting notes that we likely took when we actually did our final review. Um, if we were doing a review session, right, we went through, we took the meeting notes of what everyone actually meant, what they were talking about. And then we sent those out to the team at the end of our design review uh, in-person meeting. Well, great, let's get those meeting notes out. I can come here with a record summary, which is just everything in the record. I can combine all the files together in a single report, but I wanna do a PDF package report. PDFs can do a lot more than just be a simple document. With a PDF package report, what ends up happening is that a copy of the documents as they are exactly right now, 8.42 a.m. Uh, on Pacific time or 11.42 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday morning, this is an exact copy of these documents as they exist right now. So as I open A1.1.1, you'll see it right up here. All of the comments that we saw, all available here, very easy to see. And we have the complete record. So coming home, in addition to those documents in that folder, here is that record report. And that record report is hyperlinked. So for example, if I wanted to see Marissa's comment, edit engineer check door access, I could click that and I could see the view that Marissa was in when she placed that comment, okay? All of this works in any PDF program that supports the ISO standard file format. So this could now be sent out to pretty much everyone on the team. The same thing, let's say we're doing a punch walk. So I'm gonna come back online, I'm gonna close all the offline files. We're now back online. I'm gonna come into A1.2.1.2, okay? Because this is where I think things really start to get cool um, with studio sessions, because it really speeds up a lot of these processes. So let's say we're here. I'm gonna change into my punch profile. You'll notice in my punch profile, I actually have a variety of punch symbols in that tool chest. You can create these really easily. Um, so I can uh, turn them into detail mode. You'll notice they have the symbol. The subject is the pair of letters that's in the symbol, and the comment is uh, a comment that actually shows up here in the markup list when we place it about what needs to be done with that. And creating them, uh, when you go to add a new tool set, um, you've got the, or modify an existing tool set. Sorry, let me click an existing tool set. Um, you've got the ability to import your punch keys from Excel. Very easy to set up. And you can come through and let's say that, for example, there's foreign substance on the surface here, right? So we drop that down. And there's some paint overspray, maybe not quite there, but over here in the baggage screening room. And in addition, this baggage screening room um, also has some issues with some missing door stops and with some tile damage. Looks like this is a tiled room. We can now take all of these comments. They're all populating in real time. So Amy, for example, who's still back in studio, back in the mobile trailer, can watch these update in real time and can immediately start assigning these responsibilities. Now I mentioned custom columns can't be added in a studio session, but we set them up in advance. You'll notice the modify columns is missing. But the responsibility column was set up in advance here and moved up so that it shows up there. And now Amy can be coming through. She could say that uh, cleaning uh, both foreign substances and paint overspray are the responsibility of Steve, who we were chatting with earlier. We could say that Marissa is in charge of the missing doorstop. And we could say that Amy actually is gonna go out and fix the flooring herself or actually probably better, I'm responsible for fixing the flooring. She could have that all assigned, go out, create that summary list, and do that all 
while we were moving on to the next room. Have the summary list for that room, move on to the next room. And there's ways uh, within review to actually track which room each of these comments is in using spaces, which can be created from Revit using your Revit rooms, or can actually um, just be created here by doing a quick draw of the room. So I can, um, not in a studio session, again, that would have to be done before this got put into the session, but I can create spaces here to designate what each of the rooms are, and then those uh, would track all of the markups by those spaces. It's an option here that you actually you see it's live here. We just don't have spaces on this document at the moment. We did not create them from Revit. Fail on the part of our team creating the PDF. The final thing to note with this real-time collaboration is the settings. So we've gotten reports out, we've looked at all of this. So what are the settings that are available to us in terms of controlling the access that our collaborators have to our documents? Right off the bat, there's the ability to expire a session. So if this were a set design or constructability review or a set punch walk that we wanted to make sure that we completed it by the end of the day, we could just enable an expiration of 5 p.m. today. Great. Or it could be a week from now, two weeks from now, whatever we wanted. We can also, again, restrict our attendees by email address or uh, not, and we can add access to anyone we want. And then in permissions, we have the ability to give someone full control, so it allow them full access as an admin, or we can allow them to do specific things. So maybe we don't want them to actually be able to save a copy of the file or to print the file. We just want them to be able to mark up and to alert other people. Well, we could do all of those settings there. Again, we can do it for the whole group, or I can pick an individual user. So maybe um, Angela, I want to only give her the ability to mark up, but I also want to give her the ability to save a local copy. And then let's say that uh, Amy, because she was doing all those punch reports, she's actually an administrator just like I am. So we can give them different levels of access, apply that, and now those are their levels of permissions within this particular uh, studio session. Now, once you're done with the real-time collaboration, the nice thing about starting that real-time collaboration in Studio Projects is you can push the file back to Studio Projects. If I leave this session and I go into our Studio Project, what you'll notice is that there's this little symbol here that it, uh, denotes that this particular project file is in a session. Anyone in the project could uh, right-click the file and join that session so they could figure out, oh, there's a session up and let me jump in. But what you'll notice is that as we come back into our session here, we can do two things to update the project. We can right click and update the project copy from the documents, or we can finish out our session. And when we finish the session and we click overwrite existing file, it'll actually overwrite the file in that particular project. In addition, if we wanted to, we could generate a report at this point. I don't want to generate another report. We've already seen one. So I'm just going to click OK, and I'm going to update this project file. What you'll notice now as I click OK is it has dropped me back into the project, and it has updated those project files for us with all the comments that were made in our design review. These changes are technically pending, so I'm just going to right click and check them in, finished live review. Check it in, and there we go. We have now updated the copies within this project. I'm going to close them just so I can show you as I open them in the project folder here in our architectural sheet. This is now updated within the project. This is a great way to go through the process of doing it. Um, because as we do these live reviews, we can, again, update exactly what's going on in our document management system. And if you had started this studio session from another document management system, maybe using your SharePoint files, which is natively integrated into review, um, there's an integration to just access SharePoint files directly from review or project-wide files, you could easily then push those files straight back to SharePoint or project-wise upon finishing the session just by doing that overwrite existing.
So it makes it really easy to update files that are in your document management system as you do all of your live review sessions. A final note before we wrap this up and go into our live Q&A section is that with all of these documents, you'll notice we've got all of these markups here. All of this can be imported in back into your design program as an XREF file. So just because this is in the PDF now does not mean that this information has to be stuck in the PDF. I know some people who choose to get rid of the PDF content, they choose to take just the markups, they paste them to a blank sheet so that they have just those markups on a blank sheet, they use that as the XREF. Some of them do it just with the file like this, and some prefer to actually convert their files to TIFF first. All of that stuff you can do. Um, if you want to do the conversion, that's under File, um, and not under Batch, but Export. And you can export it as a TIFF file, a JPEG, GIF, BMG, um, pretty much whatever you want. And that allows you to be able to really uh, work with this file and um, be able to, to share it out with everybody else um, and, and get it back into the design program so that you can actually start making the updates to the design if you've been doing a design review. Okay. With that, I do want to officially conclude the American Institute of Architects Continuing Education Systems course on real-time project collaboration. If you would like to learn more about anything that you saw here today, again, Microsoft Resources is a Bluebeam Gold partner. They provide um, the software itself so they can get you a free 30-day trial or actually get your hands onto the software if you want to actually own it and work with it yourself. They can also uh, provide you training and services for those of you who already uh, have review. You can ask them for training and services uh, to help you become more well-versed in the software. And you can reach them either at the phone number you see here, 888-768-7568, or you can reach them at sales at microsoftresources.com, and they will be more than happy to help you out with anything you need. We'll leave this up for just a second for those of you who are copying down the information. And while I leave that up, I'm just gonna start coming into the question window, okay? So if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, you wanna see something again, you want to learn something new, please type that into the questions window. We're going to go ahead and use that um, to go through everything today. So we've got a lot of great questions already, and I'm able to hang out as long as you need me to to answer those questions. Okay. We have some great questions here. The first one I'm going to answer does not require me to go back into review, and that was, is there a way to rewatch this webinar later? And the answer to that is yes, this webinar has been recorded, um, and you can reach out to Microsoft Resources to get a copy of that recording. It's a great question there. Okay, hey, let's get into, uh, out of PowerPoint, let's get back into Bluebeam Review, and let's look at some of these questions. And I'm going to jump, uh, actually this is a great one to do in Studio Projects. I'm gonna check out this document in Studio Projects. So Studio Projects has full functionality in the software. That includes that Manage Columns button that we talked about that allows us to create those custom columns. So remember how there's this responsibility column here. I can manage that column using this blue button right here that says Manage Columns. You probably saw the pop-up. So as you come in, um, by the way, if you, can't find the markups list, it's under the orange carrot and markups. As you come across the top, you're gonna to come to the first blue gear wheel right next to columns, that is manage columns. And from there, you can manage both the display order and the custom columns themselves. So you can see right here, I can open up that column and I can modify it. One of the cool things that I can do here that I didn't mention earlier is that I can um, save this to my profile. What it does when I save it to the profile is that if I open a document that has never had a custom column on it before, so for example, if I were to print something from Revit and open it right away in review, it would automatically apply that custom column to that document. So the custom column is saved at the document level. 
So it doesn't work if you already have custom columns on your documents. You'll need to export and import this column if that's the case. Um, but for documents that don't already have custom columns, the Save to Profile option is a great way to streamline that. Speaking of saving to profiles, we talked a bit about profiles at the top. Every customization that we do um, in the software is saved to that profile. I've only got the stock standard profiles uh, available for me here, but remember in design review where I added that general contractor tool set, that actually is included with this design review profile when I export it, if I use this include dependencies here. So by having this check, uh, box checked, it'll actually include all of my tool sets and uh, any custom columns and things like that, which is really cool. Great question on the manage columns. Mm -hmm. Here's a great one. Where do I edit my display name for the comments within studio sessions or studio projects? Because we saw my colleague Amy Klossel was showing up as a cloth. So um, coming home and coming into my settings, so from the home, when you click the settings, what you'll see here is that um, you see sort of the login email and the server. And as you, I believe it's bandage servers, and click that there, and click the settings gear wheel down here, you can now display what your display name is. Automatically, that display name is going to show up as, um, that the display name will show up as your computer name, which is why hers shows up as a cloth, because that's what the company named her computer. Um, but you can come in here to change it. And again, to show you how that works, I'm just gonna close out so you can see it again. I came in, I'm at home and settings. From the settings, I went to manage servers. I clicked on the studio.bluedoom.com, clicked the blue gear wheel, and that's the name where I can edit it. If I were to change it around, click okay. And that would all save there. Great question. Okay. Can you put photos in the punch list linked to the comment or tag? And the answer to that is yes. This is a really cool function. It is one of the few functions that does not exist in the PDF ISO standard. So it won't work uh, for uh, people who are using, I'm just gonna do the checkout of that file. So this will not work for people who are using, um, for example, Adobe Acrobat. They won't be able to see these, but I'll show you how you can get this information out to them once you do it. So I'm gonna check out my file. I've got my punch symbol here, right? So this is pretty common for us, right? We have our punch symbols. Um, we're going around in the field. We've got two ways to attach information to them. The first way to attach the information to them is to attach an existing file. So I'm going to right click on this punch item. I'm going to come over to this thing called capture and I'm gonna capture from a file. So I'm going to pick my file here, my images, and uh, maybe just pick an electrical panel from the floor. The other thing that I can do is I can right click here. I can choose that capture and then instead of capturing from a file, I can actually capture using the camera on my computer. So here we go, I have the camera on my computer here. Lighting's not great in our demo room, so I apologize this morning, but here we go. And by the way, I can capture this as a photo or a video, but just going to capture the photo. Oh, that's an ugly face. I could retake that. <laughs> Slightly better. <laughs> and use that. And now you'll notice what I've got here is I've got two pictures. I've got the one from the file. I've got the one of my lovely mug. Uh, I highly recommend taking this, I don't know, with a Windows tablet PCs and, you know, like a Surface Pro or else with your iPad. And what you'll notice is that now that punch symbol just has this little camera in the corner. You click the camera and you can see the pictures. It does affect the file size. So depending on the size of the pictures you input, it may make your PDFs rather large. Um, but especially if you're doing a punch walk, these pictures can be invaluable to the subcontractor. I know for a fact that I really liked getting pictures of where exactly that issue was, seeing it on the page and seeing what exactly the architect was not a fan of um, in terms of, of what had been done there. Now here in the markups list, what you'll notice 
is that you don't necessarily see that media here, but when I create my PDF summary or a capture summary, um, the PDF summary actually has the ability to include that capture media addenda and can attach the media either as linked files or just include the media there. And this is how you get that media out to people who have, for example, Adobe Acrobat, Fox, at some other PDF software. You click OK. I'm appending it, and what you'll notice now, here's an image, and if I look in our thumbnails tab, we actually have a second page that has just both of those images there. That's our capture media summary. These are all of the images that are attached to that particular comment. And once again, we can click the image and it'll jump us in and show us where that markup is. So, great way to uh, declutter your page, especially for those of you um, in the middle of punch walk, going through and wanting to uh, get all of that information on there. Field issues, pretty much anything else you could attach an image to. Great question. Oh, here's a really good question that I didn't mention. I really should have mentioned earlier. Do you have to have a license to use Studio? And the nice answer is that if you have, for example, a consultant, and your consultant does not have a license of review, your consultant can still join you in a Studio session or Studio project. When it comes to Studio sessions, okay, the Studio sessions can all be, um, access by anyone, whether it's a free 30-day trial, our free viewer, Bluebeam View, all you have to do is invite them. So remember when I mentioned in my session this invite button? All you have to do is send that person an invitation. Once they get the invitation, they'll click the link, they'll be prompted to download that free 30-day trial or the free viewer, and then they can jump in, and once they jump in, they get full access to all of the tools. These tools would be grayed out if they weren't in a studio project or session, or sorry, in a studio session, um, and they all become active the minute that they enter your studio session. So for real-time reviews, no problem. You can even send them your profile with your tool sets. All of that will work as soon as they're in your studio session. Great question there. Okay, let's see what's next on our list of questions here. These have lots of great questions. Oh, and for studio projects, um, they can get in for free uh, to the studio project to see your files and download copies of them. Um, but in order to um, in order to mark, check them out and mark them up, they will need a, a paid license of review. Great question. Okay. Let's see, what else do we have? You guys are writing in lots of great questions, so please uh, continue to write in. Oh, another great question. So, uh, Review does have an iPad app. For those of you who are working in the field, the iPad app is a limited version of the desktop application. It does basic markups, the tool chest. It allows you to view the markups list, and it allows you to access sessions and projects to check documents out, mark them up, check them back in, or do that real-time collaboration. Um, in terms of the document setup work, um, a lot of the more advanced uh, functionality that's not in the iPad app, but you can do all of the, the basic markup work out in the field using the iPad. Okay. Is there an option to show line-by-line -line edits on PDF specifications? So at this moment, there is not a great way to show line-by-line -line edits on PDF specifications. You can look at them side-by-side. -side. Um, so for example, if you had two PDFs specs open, you could be looking at them side by side, and you could turn on this a sync button down here so that you could actually scroll through them at the same time. And I could quickly open a spec and show that if you want to see that specifically on a spec. Okay. Um, and then um, as you, you go through, you could see what goes on there, but there's no great way to actually see line by line where edits were made on that PDF specification. You would have to sort of look at them yourself. Okay. Great. Um, is it correct that I cannot remove another person's comments? Can we only mark them as completed? The answer to that is yes. So within a studio session, now, in a studio project, the rules are a little different because you check out and check in, and you've got the complete revision history. But, and I'm just going to do that check out again, 
Here in my studio session, I'll take my first floor plan south. This is a comment that was made by one of my colleagues. I can look in the markups list to find out who, but what you'll notice is, is that all of my control points here are grayed out. I cannot edit this. I'm gonna hit the delete button a couple of times really loudly. Yep, nothing. I can't edit their comment. I can't delete it. I'm the administrator. I own this session and I can't take out what they do. That gives them complete confidence in the accountability of this studio session because they know that any comment that they place is here and it's here to stay. Now, if they delete that comment, their deleting that comment also appears here in my record. So for example, my colleague Kelly deleted an engineering comment. This is where that comment was. We don't know exactly what that comment was, but she deleted it and I also have complete accountability because she can't say one thing to me delete it and then say, oh, I didn't tell you to do that because I've got the complete record of everything she did too. So there's accountability on both sides there, which is great. Okay. Ugh. I like this one. Can you change the status of markups in a session? The answer there is yes. So uh, for example, clicking on this comment, I can't edit it, but I can accept it, or I could reject it, or I could cancel it, or I could complete it. Again, all there with the date and the timestamp. So yes, I can very easily um, go through and change the status of the markups in the session. Great question. Have you seen review studio projects used for AEC meeting minutes? Um, I have seen people who upload their meeting minutes to studio projects. They do them, for example, in a Word document. Um, and, and use that uh, Word document, they check it out within the studio project and work on it, or they work on it locally and then upload it to the studio project. Um, so I have seen people who store their meeting minute, minutes in studio projects. Um, great question there. Okay. And then, um, yes, if you wanted to get a copy of this lecture, please email sales at microsoftresources.com. Let me actually, pop up their information again, just real quick for you, so that you can uh, write that down. The email address is right down here, sales at microsoftresources.com. Um, they can get you a copy of this webinar. Um, they can also, um, you can uh, ask them about the training services that they offer and the other services that they offer um, for review. Get your hands on a free 30-day trial uh, if you wanted to try this out yourself or even uh, purchase the software through them. Great question. Ooh, I like this one. When a task or markup is complete, it cannot be deleted, but can it be hidden to prevent visual clutter? The answer there is yes. So going to jump back out of PowerPoint, jump back in here. So we marked this is completed. I'm gonna mark another markup is completed and they should be on this same page. Let's see, page label, yeah. So this is the sheet. I'm gonna go full page on this so you can watch these two purple ones. I'll uh, go a little less than full page. So these are the two purple ones that I changed to complete. I'm gonna take that filter on. I'm gonna do a custom filter. And does not equal, oh, sorry. And I'm gonna choose that custom filter for status. Custom, status, does not equal completed. And now what you'll notice is the completed ones get grayed out. That's actually a setting. I can change the setting to make it even more opaque and harder to see, um, but it does more or less uh, take care of that there. Another thing that I can do before this goes into the studio session, and I'm going to uh, come into my studio project again, as I keep jumping back and forth. The nice thing is I can jump back and forth between these pretty much until the end of time. So I can check out this document. And one of the things that I can do here is I can actually manage our statuses. So I can take these statuses, accepted, rejected, canceled, completed. And maybe when it's completed, I wanna modify the status so that the color of that particular markup actually changes to like more or less white. So here we go. We've got white, click okay. I'm gonna click okay here. I'm going to select this particular comment here 
it's nice and blue, very easy to see, right? I can then come through, I'm gonna mark that as completed, and it changes most of the comment to white. Um, I can choose any color. I know with punch symbols a lot, I've seen a lot of people who do different colors for the punch symbols. So the point at which the punch symbol is placed, um, it may be red, uh, but once it gets accepted by the subcontractor, it changes to orange. Um, once it's been reviewed by the general contractor, it'll get changed to yellow, and once the architect has re-reviewed it, it'll change to green. And they'll set up, they'll actually have um, custom statuses all together, they'll just create a brand new one that allows them to show where in the process in terms of completion it is. So, um, lots of great options there. Um, another question here, how do we get the AIA credits? For those of you who watched live this morning, um, you will actually get the AIA credits uh, directly from our team. If you provided your AIA number, um, we'll issue the, those credits uh, to you uh, within a couple hours of completion, or I guess within a, a business day of completion. Just depends on, on how fast we can get the report um, from GoToWebinar and uh, verify that and get that uploaded to the AIA. But you should see that within a week, no more than a week. If you are not an AIA member and did not provide your AIA number, um, you can go ahead and uh, email us at webevents at bluebeam.com and we will be happy to issue you a certificate. I know certain uh, other uh, uh, certifications will take AIA certificates for continuing education credits. Um, so if you wanted one of those, you can email us and we'll send one out to you. With that, I do believe we have answered everyone's questions, but I will hang out for just another moment. And I'm going to pop back up the contact information for Microsoft Resources. Uh, just one more question here. And uh, that question is about uh, the backup. Uh, Bluebeam uh, Studio Sessions and projects are backed up. Uh, we're hosted on uh, triply redundant servers across the US, um, three locations across the US. So if one goes down, uh, the other two will be up, and it's Amazon Web Services. So um, we're really on top of things. If you ever need to access a studio session or a studio project and, and a, a backup of it, um, you can always uh, email our support team, and they're, they're happy to help you uh, find the backed up version of that session or project. Great question. Okay, and the web address again um, to get your AIA certificate is uh, web events, W-E-B-E-B-E-N-T-S at bluebeam.com, and they'll take care of providing your certificate. Great, and of course, for those of you watching this online, you unfortunately will not get a, or on a, a as a recording, um, we cannot issue you certificates for that. With that, it does look like we are out of questions. I want to thank you all again so much for coming. Please, if you think of anything else, reach out to Microsoft Resources, 888-768-7568 or sales at microsoftresources.com. They're a Bluebeam Gold partner. They provide top-notch training and services along with um, pre and post-sale support. Um, they will be more than happy to help you out with all of your Bluebeam needs. So um, please reach out to them, free 30-day trial, or just to buy the software. Um, right now, they'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you again so much, and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar.